over in Philippians chapter 3, turn there with me please, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, you'll find it in there, Philippians chapter 3, Paul writes a very, a very interesting thing <laughs> to the saints in Philippi. Now he's writing to a church, he could just as well write this to our church. Verse 17, join with others in following my example, brothers, and take note of those who live according to the pattern we gave you. This is, this is a biblical pattern of success. Join with others in following my example, and take note of those who live according to the pattern we gave you. Interesting. Not a word in there about do your own thing, get your own private revelation, or do whatever you think, but the pattern for success, Paul said to the Christians in, in Philippi was, I want you to join with others who are doing this, and what they're doing is they're following my example, and what I want you to take a special note is, note those, did you see that in there? Take note of, take note of those who are living according to the pattern that he gave them. He gave them a pattern of how to live. Paul being a rabbi, I can imagine what a, a lot was in that pattern. The pattern of faithful attendance at church, synagogue, every week, that's where they were. Faithful in terms of his prayer life, faithful in terms of the, the mitzvahs he did. And he gave that as a pattern. He didn't just preach Jesus to them and say, God bless, have a great eternity, I'll see you in heaven. But Paul went out, and we have evidence there that what he did is he had a pattern by which they were to live, and that is the rabbi Talmudin pattern that he was doing. Imitate what I'm doing. Follow my example. Nothing flies more in the face of the contemporary Christian church in the world than that verse. In fact, the verses I'm going to share with you today are verses that you will find that the church gets very nervous about. Even pastors get nervous about it. But there it is. It's Bible. We say we're Bible believers. And so he says, follow that example. Now listen to the Amplified. The Amplified amplifies it. Blessed, happy, fortunate, prosperous, and enviable is the man who walks and lives. Oh, excuse me. I jumped ahead of myself. I, I'm, I'm grabbing the next verse. Uh, the, the Jewish Bible, <laughs> that sounds great. We're going to be there in a minute. That, that's pri I'm priming you something there. Uh, the contemporary Jewish Bible says, Brothers, join in imitating me and pay attention to those who live according to the pattern we've set for you. Imitate. Imitate. As a matter of fact, it, it's an amazing thing, uh, and Randy, Randy can tell you about it, but uh, that after I, I got associated with Jim, and Jim, Jim spoke in, in, in large gatherings, thousands of peoples, and, and uh, Randy pointed out one day, he says, you know, Dad, he said, some of your mannerisms are just like Jim. This is it. I never used to do that. I was a, hi, how are you? You know, I'm preaching my words, standing behind the pulpit like most pastors, you know. But, but you know, I watch Jim, and I'm, he's a communicator. If you can communicate with 10,000, and I got 100 in my church at that time, he knows more about it than I do. And, and I learned, not in seminary, I learned from imitating him. Now, if you watch Randy, when Randy talks, you know, Randy does a lot of this, you know. Uh, why, wh what's wrong with that? That's a very biblical pattern. Okay? And so the Message Bible says this, stick with me, friends, keep track of those you see running this same course, headed for the same goal. There are many out there taking other paths, choosing other goals, and trying to get you to go along with them. Hmm, I like that. You know, the, the, the Bible is full of wisdom. The Bible is full of, of examples of faith, of courage, of wisdom. And, and quickly looking at two, David is a man after God's own heart. Psalm chapter 1, verse 1 and 2, I think you know that. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel, who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked or stand in the way of sinners or seat in the, sit in the seat of uh, mockers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. That's the one I started to read to you from the Amplified. Listen to it. Blessed, happy, fortunate, prosperous, and enviable is the man who walks and lives not in the counsel of the ungodly, following their advice, their plans, and their purposes, nor stand submissive and inactive in the paths where sinners walk, nor sits down to relax and rest where the scornful and the mockers gather. 
but his delight and desire are in the law of the Lord and on his law, the precepts, the instructions, the teachings of God. He habitually meditates, ponders and studies by day and by night. That was David's advice. That if you want to be blessed, if you want to be a man to be envied, a woman to be envied, then you cannot walk according to the advice of the world. You cannot walk according to the advice of the world. The advice, the counsel of the world, if you walk that way, you, you will not arrive in a place where we envy you, where we want to be like you. Hmm? But the one who's walking in the advice of God will. Now Solomon, his son, picks up that same theme, and we all know that Solomon becomes the teacher of wisdom for successful living. One thing that amazed me was as I began exploring those who were, were uh, on the edge of successful business in, in this world, entrepreneurship, the Zig Ziglar's of the world, was how often they quoted the Bible. And how often in quoting the Bible they quoted the book of Proverbs. And I can remember one day sitting there and said, this is amazing. There are men and women out there who are building their lives, building their marriages, building their homes, building their finances, and they're using the Bible as a guide whether or not they're Christians. But I get in the church, and Christians in the church were telling me, you can't succeed. And quoting no Bible, by the way. Amazing. See, the, the book of Proverbs will work whether you're a Christian or not. And what a shame that the sons and daughters of God won't apply the book of Proverbs, but the sons and daughters of the world will, and they get the results. Why? It's God's Word. It's God's instruction. So Solomon said, I want wisdom, and God gave it to him. Uh, in Proverbs chapter 1, uh, it starts out, the Proverbs of Solomon, son of David, king of Israel, for attaining wisdom and discipline, for understanding words of insight, for acquiring a disciplined and prudent life, doing what is right and just and fair, for giving prudence to the simple, knowledge and discretion to the young. Let the wise listen and add to their learning. Let the discerning get guidance for understanding Proverbs and parables, the sayings and the riddles of the wise. That's why he's writing it all. Let me put it this way. If you're stupid, this will make you smart. Okay? So I want to run quickly through some Proverbs. Uh, take a look at them with me, if you will. Uh, Proverbs chapter 11. Won't take us long just to refresh your mind about these things. Proverbs chapter 11. We're going somewhere today. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 14. For lack of guidance, a nation falls, but many advisors make victory sure. For lack of guidance, a nation falls, but many advisors make victory sure. The Amplified says, where no wise guidance is, the people fall, but in a multitude of counselors, there is safety. The King James says, where no counsel is, the people fall, but in a multitude of counselors, there is safety. The Message Bible says, without good direction, people lose their way. The more wise counsel you follow, the better your chances. All right? Now turn to Proverbs 15. Proverbs 15, verse 22. And Solomon tells us there, plans, say plans. Any, any, anybody got plans? I hope you got plans. Those who fail to plan, plan to fail. Amen. Come on. You got plans for next year to be differently? You got, are you thinking that through? Are you making plans? Plans fail for lack of counsel. But with many advisors, they succeed. The Message Bible says there, refuse good advice and watch your plans fail. Take good counsel and watch them succeed. Now turn over to Proverbs chapter 19. Are you getting a message from Solomon here? Proverbs 19, 20. Listen to advice and accept instruction, and in the end, you will be wise. The Amplified Bible says, hear counsel, receive instruction, and accept correction that you may be wise in the time to come. My, 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 my. Proverbs chapter 20. Just turn over a page there. Uh, verse 18. You still with me? Proverbs 20, verse 18. Make plans by seeking advice. If you wage war, obtain guidance. Again, the Amplified Bible says, purposes and plans are established by counsel, and only with good advice make or carry on war. Amen? So, in these one, two, three, four quick verses from Proverbs, we find that Solomon is saying over and over and over again that if you're on your own, making your own decisions, doing your own thing, 
You're setting yourself up for failure, but if you'll seek out good wisdom, good counsel, good advisors who input into your life, then you'll have success. So my question to you today is, who's your advisors? Who's advising you? You know, people will come up sometimes and, and I'll see them, you know, really excited about things that the Lord's done or a new lesson they've learned, let's say, about healing. And then I meet them a week later and boy, they're all discouraged about healing and aren't sure they really believe in it. And I always ask one question, who'd you talk to? You sat here, you heard a message, you opened your Bible, you saw it there. Now you come back and you're in doubt and confusion. Who did you talk to? Doubt and confusion didn't just arrive. You had the Word of God. You had the preacher's voice behind the Word of God. So you saw it with your eyes, heard it with your ears, walked out convinced of it, and now two, three, four days later, you're no longer convinced of it. Who did you talk to? Somebody gave you input, and you believed their input and threw out what God said. People will say, well, I don't have, I don't have advisors or we don't like the word counselors as if we need counseling. Come on, counseling is, is part of what it's all about. I don't need any. Huh. There's a saying I read that said, he who is always his own counselor will often have a fool for a, for a client. <laughs> Glory to God. Listen, <laughs> the truth is, the truth is we all have advisors. The truth is people are speaking into your life all the time and it's having an effect on you. In fact, you are where you are today because of what's been spoken into your life. Exactly what's been, your brain just sits up there and it doesn't discriminate at all. It just receives it all and if you don't correct things, it gets in there and suddenly you're thinking like you used to think when you were 16 years old. You got stinking thinking in your head that you've carried all these, and it shows up and it sabotages you as an adult because you haven't done what the Bible says, renew your mind. You're carrying around words. Sticks and stones will hurt my bo bones, but words will never hurt me. Break my bones. Words will never. That's a lie. That's an absolute lie. Sticks and stones will bruise your bones or break them, but words can kill you. Words can take your dream from you. Words can take your hope from you. Words can convince you you're stupid when there's nothing stupid about you. Words are powerful. Words change the whole structure of nations. Nations go to war over wrong words. We're in a, war right, in a war right in this world right now that's being formed by words of the Muslim world, of the Palestinian world. Words, word, words that get put on the press, get on the news, and people form idiotic assumptions because of words, while Christians remain silent and won't speak the truth. Words coming into your life. So my question again is, who are your advisors? Well, people say, I don't have advisors. What about your family? Come on, you know, I know, your family has opinions. Come on. That's where most people get their advice from. Absolutely amazing. I've seen it all. Come on, 40 years of ministry, I've seen a lot of things. And I continue to see. These are live stories. You know, people break free from family. They, they, their life comes together. They get a good job. They get ahead. They're putting their life together. And, and the family comes against them. Absolutely amazing. People give their life to Yeshua. They get born again. Their life takes on a positive thing, and family comes against them. The family's broke, disgusted, alcoholics, or whatever else they are, and they criticize the one who's now free. You've got to learn that your family is probably the least likely that's going to give you the advice you need, unless you have a strong Christian family where you have a mom and dad who love the Lord and follow faithfully and believe in your success and will let you walk out the Word of God. Uh, the, the counselors for other people are their friends. Well, I was just talking with a friend. What are you doing talking with friends about the things of God, the things He put in your heart that are your dreams? Yeshua said at one point, don't put your pearls in front of the swine. Now, I didn't call your friends pigs. <laughs> but come on, you, we've all had the experience. You know, you get excited, you get a dream, you want to do something, you go and you tell a friend and they dump on it. Why are you going to do that? Come on, we read, in, we read about, you know, ordinary, trying to get out of the, 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 the land of familiar, and it was his best friend who said, well, you shouldn't do that, that's too risky. No, friends can be a source of wrong counsel. But your friends are counseling you. They are advising you, sometimes without even a, a sentence. Well, I think I'm going to do this and so, and they look at you like, now tell me if that's not advice. Tell me if that's not counsel. You know, just their look took it away, said don't do that, giving you input all the time. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 
pastors, teachers, mentors can all be friends, but you've got to make a choice. Are your, are your counselors, are your advisors, because you are going to have them, you already do, are they going to come from the world or are they going to come from the Word of God? Because they're coming from one place or the other. And I know the vast majority of Christians that I know are trying to walk out worldly, uh, uh, word counsel, the counsel of God, but they're living with worldly counsel coming in. And they're divided. And James says that a man who's divided, don't let him think that anything he asks for will happen. Well, let me see. What kind of worldly advice do you look at? Uh, newspaper? You know, I had to go buy these. I don't, I don't have these. <laughs> Let me see. We can get the Boston Globe. We can get, uh, uh, here you go, Daily News, Home Free, Governor Spring's dad in a charge killing, uh, Fitchburg Sentinel, Firefighters Family Mourn, uh, what's happening to jobs here, uh, wow, a Telegram and Gazette, Business Noses Out Sanctions. I mean, you know, so is this going to tell you what's going to happen? People read it and they say, have you heard? This is what's going to happen. The economy's falling apart, everything's doing, you can't get ahead. Or magazines. Now there was a time when I could have walked in here and I could have had Time Magazine, and I could have had Newsweek Magazine, and I could have had five or six other magazines because they all came to my house. They don't come to my house anymore. You know? But, but that, that's giving you advice when you read them. That's telling you what to think. You say, well, Pastor, I've learned from being around the church here, and, and I don't get news magazines, and I certainly don't. I, I don't get the newspaper and all that. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't have the world coming in. Uh, my, uh, you don't have the world coming in? Uh, let me see the box. Again, in ordinary said, what do we do? You get, have your ordinary life, your ordinary job. You come home, you all get your ordinary food, and you sit in front of the box. The box. I'll tell you, this does more damage to steal a Christian success than anything that is existent in life. This is more dangerous to you than drugs, more dangerous th than to you than alcohol. Because you sit there and you watch mindless stuff taking away your future. You cannot watch broken marriages on the box and put together a good marriage. You cannot watch people getting sick on the box and think that you're going to maintain a few scriptures on healing in your life. Every advertisement on this box these days seems to be about drugs. And now they don't even want you to ask your doctor uh, about it. You tell the doctor you want it. They're bypassing the doctor and trying to peddle their drugs straight to you. You watch this box in the wrong way. Well, you say, well, pastor, there's Christian TV. Yeah, there is, but you still got to be careful. I'm a great proponent of Sky Angel. You know, I think Sky Angel's got some good stuff, but if you got Sky Angel, you still got to watch it. The Hallmark Channel doesn't have all good stuff on it. Come on. Christian programs where they're talking about, oh yeah, you know, God gave me this, and God gave me this disease, and God, I have a great testimony, and my, my daughter was killed, but God took her life because God had a purpose. Junk garbage if you want to live a life of faith. And if you watch that stuff, and here's what people, pastor, it doesn't bother me. You're a liar. You're a liar. You're a fool. You're a fool. Of course it does. You can't sit there and say, well, you know, I'm encouraging my f neighbor to watch the Christian program so they'll get saved. Well, if it doesn't, bu it doesn't change people, why, why do you believe they're going to get saved watching it? If they can get saved watching it, you can get into a point of discouragement and fear and have every hope taken out of you from things that come across that box. Christian TV can be as dangerous, if not more so, than secular TV, because a lot of Christians who won't watch secular TV will watch stuff on Christian TV that is undermining their faith. Well, what do you do, Pastor? I mean, I want to, you, you learn to be quick with the button. Quick with the button. Amen? Get into that stuff, you just hit it and turn it off. Amen? I mean, there, there's things out there that, you know, wh why do you want to clean up garbage? Now, I was reading one of the rabbis was talking about in the book of Proverbs where it talks about you shouldn't, not only should you not applaud an evil man, well, you know, we know he's evil, but, but he's good, he does this good thing, so while I know he's evil here, but I'm, I, I, I'm going to speak well of his good characters, Bible says you don't even speak well of his good characters because people who don't know think you're supporting the man. And so the rabbis say you don't even fantasize about the lifestyle of an evil man. And the minute I read that, I wrote in my Mishli. TV games, video games, what are you doing? 
What is a Christian child doing blowing up people on a video game? What, what, are, you, what, are, you, what are you playing these, these games where people are being maimed or destroyed or stealing from one another? That's not funny. And it will take the very life out of your child. It will set them up for failure. I have not yet seen anybody that I want to follow in my Christian life who loves video games, grew up on them. They steer you off. Next thing you know, you have an inability to even judge uh, uh, movies right. Why do I want to watch? Well, they didn't swear in it, and it was just a little bit of mild violence. Wait a minute. It is an adulterous relationship you're watching. What are you doing watching adultery? On, on, on TV and thinking you're going to have a godly life. It isn't going to happen. That advice is coming in on you and that grows up a generation of Christians who say, well, you know, really it's not so bad after all. Huh? You get desensitized to what the Bible calls as evil. You say, well, you know, I, I really watch that. I don't have any other counselors in my life. Anybody know what that one is? It's a, it's a computer. Oh, Pastor, we can't get along without a computer. I'm not saying you shouldn't have a computer. I'm talking about the world. We're going to get over to the words way over here. But the world, this thing here is an extremely dangerous instrument called the Internet. You can go anywhere you want. It has allowed people behind the scenes to do.